Tenzin Gyatso is a Buddhist monk. To his followers, he is holy lord, gentle glory, eloquent, compassionate, defender of the faith, ocean of wisdom. His holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama of Tibet. The Dalai Lama is regarded as the preeminent Buddhist monk by the different schools of Buddhism. His message of compassion, altruism and peace have made him a spokesman for our troubled times. The Dalai Lama is regarded as the 14th incarnation of the Buddha aspect of compassion of Avalokiteshvara. Your Holiness, are you conscious of your earlier birth, of your earlier incarnations? You mean knowledge or knowing? Yes. Yes. You see, when I was small, you see, uh, I expressed many sort of, I think, past memory, and I recognize you see, certain articles which belong previous life. So my mother uh, and also see, some other people who uh, saw this you see, event, so they told me. At the moment, I think you see, when person, I say, grown up, the past memory will naturally, you see, diminish, unless you make attempt to revive these, you see, faint memory through meditation, you see, samadhi. Do you think there is a scientific basis for reincarnation? You know, consciousness or mind and body, there are two things. So, body, uh, grosser level of you see, body, then you see, for one life. On subtler body, there's continuation, but grosser body, only you see, for one life. So now the uh, mind, unless the continuity of previous mind there, you see, there's uh, no possibility to all the certain, you see, mind come to exist. So that is the basic reason. Uh, what kind of relationship do you feel with the land of, of the Buddha's birth? Now, when we were in Tibet, you see, uh, people, you see, let us say, uh, always you see, looking forward to have pilgrimage in India, to those in Buddhist places like Buddha Gaya, these things but physically difficult to reach. Now we are in this country, very easy to reach these places. And in any way, we regard this country, we call what call, hmm, Arya Bhumi, the land of something, which is sacred or something like that. So in any way, we regard this country as our guru's land, I think spiritual, spiritual relation. Now I, personally, you see, I, now I spend majority of my let's say, life, lifetime here in this country. So I myself consider as a half as an Indian. And so we are very fortunate. Founded this country for our sort of second home. It seems to be spirituality which is leading to the greatest conflict. And, and, and bloodshed and tension in the world today. So don't you think there's something wrong with spirituality that this should have happened? I think now this, as you mentioned, it is true not only today but in, in the past also. You see, in the name of religion, name of spiritual, sometimes, you see, human suffering develop. Now, you see, if we uh, Look, the let's say reality, real sort of situation. I feel the if you take spiritual, let's say, uh, let's say spiritual, and genuinely, and practice sincerely, then I I don't think it may, you see, create problem. Would you describe what this spirituality means? When you say practice spirituality, what, what might be practiced? Various different spiritual, 
despite many different philosophy at teaching a method, the basic aim is try to produce good human being. Good human being means not face or body, but mainly you say mind. So good motivation, is a sincere motivation. Some say you see there is God, some say no God, doesn't matter. The main message or aim is try to be a I don't, and their own follower become a good human being. So, so if you take, you see, that sort of, you see, what call essential message. essential message, then it is very helpful to harm, to become, how to say, friendly attitude and harmony. This is I feel. So, you see, uh, when you see human sort of, how to say, human conflict, Mm, rights, then religion also use as the instrument for another what call driver division. To take religion very sincerely and uh, implement in day to day life. In that way, religion will not mm, create problem. In ancient time, you see, uh, not much contact. Then you see, only one's own dharma or spiritual knows. The other one, you see what kind of things you see, do not know. So that also I think one contributor. So now modern period, so more information, more available about other you see, teachings, you see, method or philosophy. And I think as you come closer, it will help to reduce this kind of uh, say, unfortunate things. Uh, one of the problems with holiness is that increasingly uh, religion has been politicized. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, it was a tradition in Tibet that uh, the Dalai Lama was both spiritual and temporal leader. And one of the sources of conflict has been the introduction of politics to, into religion and religion into politics. So how would you, in your sort of ideal society, resolve the relationship between these two? I don't see any conflict. Now you see, because, as I mentioned earlier, Dharma or spiritual is the, the, the basic meaning is good heart. So now, therefore, whether you see politician or whether in politics or law or economic, in, in, in doctor, in engineer, in any field, even in military field, I feel the good heart is the key thing, most important thing. So the politician, in this sense, you see, spiritual minded become, is maybe better politician rather than, you see, without spiritual, just you see, simply politics. So, you see, good heart develops some kind of self discipline. Whether there's someone who's going to punish on you or not, you, see, you yourself behave well. Think, how to say, very carefully. The genuine sense of brotherhood, sisterhood, on the basis of compassion and love. This is, I think, uh, highly necessary these days. Very often, Your Holiness, at the personal level, uh, many of us, we, um, we subscribe to, 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 to the goals and ideals that you suggest, but we find ourselves too weak uh, to be able to, to develop true altruism, true compassion, and to get the mental discipline. Uh, sort of the compulsions of earning a livelihood, of, of building a house, of having a, a beautiful wife and children and a job is what tends to dominate our lives. As a spiritual teacher, uh, what, what techniques or, or, or strategies or devices could you recommend or urge that, that it might be easier for us to achieve the sort of the more noble ideals and goals? So I feel now uh, you see, in order to develop good heart, you see, without these complicated spiritual, what to say, techniques such as samadhi or wisdom, or deeper wisdom, or high type of wisdom, without these things, simply, you see, trying to investigate, you see, I think, the nature of humanity and trying to investigate one's own experiences. Then, you see, human being, as a, what call, 
social animal. Uh, whether we like it or not, we have to uh, live, you see, together, side by side. Now, therefore, the nat sort of what we call natural tendency, you see, we love our friend, including, I mean, if a layman, you see, a wife or children. Altruism is actually uh, very helpful for oneself. Through altruism, you gain a lot. Whether other people gain, gain or not, in any way, you see, you yourself gain much things. So, sometimes I call, if you be a, let's say, selfish, then be a wise selfish. That means, you see, selfish motivation, with that, helping other people, uh, share other people's suffering, then you, you get more benefit. What real use of anger and hatred? You see, if you think according to our own experience, and also you see, our friends, you see, past experience, it's, it's quite clear. You see, one of best human quality is, you see, human or say the wisdom or intelligence which can judge you see, right and wrong. When you have strong anger, uh, then you use certain uh, harsh word or certain, you see, uh, uh, ugly attitude or expression. Then uh, when anger diminishes, you feel very shy, isn't it? Do Sometimes you, you, you... Do you feel anger? Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> I think it's basically my nature. I can say, I think, the Tibetan usually you see, regard those people who come from my native place, people regard as a short temper. <laughs> In any way, I myself as a, you see, short temper. But through, you see, analyze these things. And in my own case, you see, I always you see, express, you see, these things to my friend. So while, you see, talking or explaining these things, so it also help to myself. So in any way, this, I mean, this, I would say, my own sort of technique or analy analyzation, this help, help me. Would your holiness describe to us um, a typical day? What do you do? What time do you get up? And what do you do all day? Uh, a day said that you might be in, in residence in Dharamsala. So usually 4, 4.30, wake up. Do you watch television, for example? In the yes, evenings. Yes. Mm. Television, not much. Uh -huh. These days, not much. Why don't you Only find the evening. programs hmm? very good? The, the telegram, I don't know what to say, television program, their time uh -huh. and my own time, not suitable. <laughs> so there's clash. So usually, you see, good television or good picture, you see, show late night. So that is the, for me, you see, for sleep, good sleep, <laughs> rather than busy eye consciousness. <laughs> in any way, the early, in early morning, the best period to meditate and to think or to, is to analyze certain things, and mainly in spiritual line. And also, you see, as a Buddhist monk, no dinner. So due to, you see, the previous night, no dinner. So when, even, you see, uh, 4, 4.30, the Already, you see, uh, hungry. What is the feeling of, what to say? Great hunger. Uh, great hunger there. So usually, uh, 5.30, around 5, 5.30, my heavy breakfast. I, I, don't, I don't like Tibetan tea. That's not suitable. That sometimes creates some problem in my head or some, some uh, it, it, it develops feeling of what called vomit, vomit. So I prefer, Indian tea, Darjeeling tea. <laughs> anyway, like that. Then, uh, usually you see in morning time, say up to lunch, I spend mostly, you see, meditation and study myself. Mainly, you see, Buddhist philosophy in, in Tibetan, I mean, Tibetan scriptures, reading, some I already used to study in Tibet, so revive this knowledge. And sometimes, you see, learn new things. And then evening, always, you see, my 
let say, in office, in meeting with people, and read some papers like that. So then, evening about um, nine, nine thirty, between nine, ten, and go to sleep. That is my important meditation. In terms of the Buddhist worldview, where do you think the planet is headed? Basically, the human being still under the what is it, nourishment, what to say, nourishment of nature, isn't it? So this is through science and technology. This immense sort of certain I mean, power much increase. So if mm, we, uh, I think, through help of you see technology, you see we can uh, we can use it destroy, we can use or consume mm, beyond I think, I think nature's capacity yes, to reproduce. Yes, that's right. That's right. Uh, as a Buddhist. Of course, since there is a beginning, so logically there is end. You've had considerable meetings and dialogues with scientists, and you have personally been interested in the meeting ground between science and religion, shall I say science and spirituality. Uh, could you tell us something about the insights that, that, that you have developed, both from your spiritual practice and from your dialogues with, uh, with the scientists? And do you, in fact, see a meeting ground, or are they contradictory, or complementary, or how do they coexist? I feel, you see, two things. One, in purely academic level. Uh, one, for uh, benefit of humanity. Now, s science mainly deal with uh, matters. The Spiritual, generally, you see, basically, I think, or mainly, deal with mind. Or, another word you may call inner word and external word. We human being, including human being, all you see, sentient being, we call, Buddhists call, sentient being, one being who have feeling. Now, mm, uh, need only matters, then, then all right, you see, no need spiritual. But in fact, the matter alone, you see, no feeling. If we deal only using matters, then since matter have no feeling, no pain, no pleasure, if there is no pleasure and pains, and then we cannot make demarcation, which is positive, which is negative. So when we say, you see, certain things are negative because it brings suffering. And certain things good because it brings happiness or pleasure. So, therefore, you see, we cannot ignore, we cannot neglect about inner world. Your Holiness, uh, have you felt also in, your, uh, in, in, in this uh, exploration mm -hmm that there is a meeting ground between the way science perceives the universe mm. and, uh, say, the Buddhist uh, spiritual scriptures or your uh, spiritual insights perceive the universe. So now this is the basic, uh, I mean, idea. So then, qu next question, whether there is possibility to come together, come side by side. Uh, as far as Buddhism is concerned now, you see, in neuro or say, neurobiology, and psychology, and cosmology, and then uh, physics, I think subatomic physics. In these different fields, there are a lot of, you see, Buddhist explanation, new knowledge, very helpful, and to them also, some Buddhist explanation and Buddhist technique help in their concerned field. So something very interesting, the meeting, meeting ground, Eastern philosophy and Western science, I feel the very nature of the relation between matter and mind, that is the place where Eastern philosophy and Western science could meet. And sometimes I call, could have marriage, happy marriage without divorce. Mm -hmm. So this is I feel. You see, this is greater, pot, great, greater potential, you see, to carry more research work, you see, jointly or side by side. We find that many ancient scriptures 
have predicted uh, contemporary ailments. Um, what is the relationship between Tibetan medicine and, say, Tibetan spirituality? I think, um, since you see, in, in, in our practice, you see, medicine and spiritual, uh, I'd say, blessing or certain things, you see, uh, practice simultaneously. So sometimes it, uh, it go together. But I think it's basically the Tibetan medical system is something different since the last few years. Now there are quite a number of occasions the Tibetan medicine, through Tibetan medicine, is a certain illness which uh, allopathic medicine sometimes is difficult to cure and what do you call diagnosis. Hmm. But through Tibetan medicine and Tibetan medical system, uh, something, something good result happen. What is your dream for the world? I think world itself. I think telling us, showing us, be human being, be careful, be because behave well, and more harmony. Not only harmony you yourself, but harmony with nature. At that kind of you see, signal, I think, already showing by our mother planet. Interlink, interrelation, much increase. So under such circumstances, you see, the more altruistic attitude, I think, highly necessary. You see, helping other people, concern other people, ultimately bring pros more prosperity on yourself. So I'm not talking about, you see, spiritual or next life, or nirvana. That is my own business. Nothing to do with you. <laughs> so you see, as a human brother, sisters, now you see, I think even that viewpoint, now warm heart, uh, altruistic, is something, I think something important. And through that way, I feel, I think, better world, more harmony, more happier, using those uh, problems which uh, happen due to nature. And we can't help. We have, to, we have to accept. But through harmony, we can, if not eliminate completely, definitely it will reduce man-made problem. So there's in any way, whether achieve or not, it is worthwhile to make attempt, as I feel. So, you see, wherever I visit, I go, I meet, you see, friend, I always talking is the importance of love and kindness. This is sometimes I call universal dharma, universal religion. Someone may be very anti-religion, absolutely all right, but be a good human being, good home hearted. That is my feeling. That's my idea.